Hello, uh, I'm now moving on with um, a lecture about trying to um, put images or background images or color onto a web page. All about the image tag, really. I know we're coming off the banner, we got a little bit of sub exposure to the image tag and putting the image tag on the banner. So your test drive 18 should have the image already on that. So if it doesn't, then you might have to go back and watch the uh, video of creating a banner and then uh, putting that banner on to the um, uh, test drive 18. Okay, so I'm right here on Canvas. I'm getting started and I'm uh, going into where it says notes on adding images in background uh, example problem 19. So I'm going to go ahead and click on open that. And I think I already have that open. All right. And um, uh, we're going to take the same approach like that we did before with the test drive. We're going to copy and paste 18 and then rename it to a uh, test drive 19. Okay, then I'm going to open the notes. Uh, and get into the notes uh, of, of the uh, test drive 19. It's going to call for us again to get a split screen. I'll have the notepad open. I have the browser of 19 then open uh, to ready to rock and roll. So once we've done that, uh, you can see I've given you a visual of um, the notes on the web resources where we need to go. And then once we're all, all the way done, I'll be asking you to then submit the example 19 in this Dropbox, okay? So this example 19 would cover getting credit for doing that banner uh, that you created and having images on your test drive 19 then. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna jump right in, over into the, the notes area. I'm gonna quickly open up the notes so we know where the notes are. And I think I very well already had that. And I'm, I'm in the modules. Um, and this is the last example problem 19 that we're going through. We, we did example 17, we did an example uh, 18, we, did, we created a banner, we put the banner on that 18, and now we're moving on to 19. And so I think I already have these uh, notes open. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click the next tab and, and open up these notes as well. All right. So it's all about now su supporting images on our uh, test drive web page. And um, I'll let you know that different browsers will have different drop down me menus based on uh, how you can copy an image you can copy images from the internet okay um and but basically um you know right click and you either going to be seeking out something that says save picture as or save image as okay it's probably more prevalent to save image as than save picture but um simply we're going to be applying images to a web page um and we're going to be uh looking at different attributes that are supported with the image tag okay so real quick our marketplace um in terms of the image format has uh, the basic three different types of image inside a web pages. Uh, there's more, there's, there's tons of different platform, but the basic three are a GIF, is a JPEG, and then a ping. And I've given the definitions here. I'm not going to sit here and try to read this to you, but understand in the marketplace, um, a web page, you could be dealing, which we very well may experience here in this uh, example, you very well may have some images on your web page that are JPEG related and some images on your web page that are ping related. Now, we, we when we created the banner, I asked you guys to go ahead and save it as a ping file. Okay, so just understand there's there's different platforms and your your image may load up broken because you may have typed the image in thinking it was a JPEG uh, and typing JPG when in fact it is a ping format. So knowledge of, of the, the extension of what type of file or what type of image is, is highly important too in terms of coding the proper file name into the tag, okay? So... We're going to jump into starting example problem 19. And ladies and gentlemen, these steps one, two, three, four, I'm going to go through uh, and I'm going to work through them. All right. Because this is these steps that are taking 18, uh, problem 18, and a copy and a patient 18 to 19, renaming it, and then open up the notepad and open up 19. So um, I like to start a new, I want to work with a new file, not the same one. So we're doing a copy and a paste mode. So you've seen this already in when, when trying to work with example uh, 18. So I'm going to do it with you as well. So I'm going to go to my file folder, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. And again, I'm going to documents, I'm going side programming, and you can see the web development. Even though we're in module seven, I didn't call it module seven. I, I wanted just to call it web development so it stands out. So if I go in there, if you call also um, 
during the during the the video of the um, creating the banner, I actually told you to create a picture, but it's in these notes as well by you you guys trying to create a picture folder. Uh, if I go in there real quick and show you, I have some additional files in here than I than I did last class period. I'm gonna, I'll be coming back to them. You can see uh, a couple files down here uh, that I'm gonna be referring to in this class. So if I go back out, um, ladies and gentlemen, this, these are those steps right here that I want to copy example problem 19 and paste it as example and rename it and paste it as uh, paste it and rename it example 19. So I'm going to right click over this mouse. I'm going to go copy. I'm then going to go paste and it basically pasted it, um, as you can see right here, example problem 18 as a copy. I'm now going to go hover over top of it, I'm going to go rename. I'm now gonna rename this and make subtle changes to this. I do not want to delete the period HTML, but I'm going right behind the HTML and deleting all the way to the eight and then retyping a the nine. How hard was that? So I copied a paste, I, I, I clicked in there, I said rename and I deleted the word copy and, and, and the number eight and I, I put a, a number nine and I click away. Boom, I now have number nine nested in here. I now have approximately four different web pages that I'm, I'm gonna be utilizing. So if I go back to the browser, okay? So I've done everything through step number three, okay? Step one, two, and three, I just did, okay? I'm now moving on, ladies and gentlemen, to open up the example problem 19, the, the notepad in the code. So I'm gonna take steps with you uh, as well um, in terms of doing this. So if I go back to, um, the folder. I'm going to go ahead and launch example 19 by double clicking and seeing the browser load up and making sure we're all on the same page with having this test drive page open up. So you can now see, okay, this is the banner I created last class period and it's nested up here. And we, we put it in 18, did a copy and paste, it's, it's still showing up. So now I, I'm good. I feel I'm comfortable. I'm ready to rock and roll uh, with and trying to continue work with this test drive page 19. But I'm going to go back just like our notes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be open the notes up in the code so I can see it in the, in the notepad. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go here. I'm going to right click number 19. I'm going to open with, and I now hover and see notepad. If you don't see notepad on this list, you're going to have to choose all apps and you'll have to drill down and find notepad. Okay. But knowing that I did it once, it should hover in this area. So I'm just simply going to click notepad. I now have my notepad opened up and I'm going to try to put myself in split screen. I'm going to move this over to the right hand side. I'm then going to go and open up my notes. Um, which I, I see here, which I now have done, and I can see my test drive as well, okay? So I have my test drive here, okay? I have the notes, my browser is on one side and the code's on the other. I'm focusing on the code, ladies and gentlemen. Now, understand, Firebox, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make quickly two subtle changes to the Firebox. In this Firebox, I'm gonna change the file name now. It's no longer 18, but I'll make a subtle change. I'm gonna back out the number eight, ladies and gentlemen, and put a nine. So now my uh, the file name is called example nine. I'm gonna slow scrolly down to the title page, right where we had the image of the uh, banner and I had our name here, I'm changing this example problem 18 to actually 19 because that's what we're on. So I'm making subtle changes to the web test drive page, changing the different places where it, sh it did read 18 to where it now reads 19. So if I go file save, I'm chunking and I say this word chunking again, and I come over to the browser and I refresh my browser, you should now read that my example problem now reads 19 in here, 19 in here. Okay. So, um, okay. So now I got a, 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 I set the stage. I am now ready to move forward and start reviewing the HTML tags. All right, uh, I'm back on the split screen and I have the um, notes open. And understand these notes, I have uh, about seven different steps. I have step one, then I have step two, three, four, five, six, and then seven that I want to go to to dissect images and what you can do with them. And so I'm scrolling back up. I'm starting with uh, step one. And I talk about inserting the image onto a your web page. And I think if I come over, drop over to the um, um, the note, notepad, I have kind of, we kind of have done that once. And this was the code I gave you to support your banner 
okay and it's reading inside your picture folder okay but what happens a lot of times is if you would send this to the internet you would also have to have a folder picture on online to your own server or whatever server you're using so a lot of times people try to make the the image relevant uh, a lot of time and so um uh, I do talk to you guys a little bit about, you know, the SRC and what does the SRC and that refers to it's the source. That is a source of the file and it's got to be in the quotation. So you got to have the equal sign. You got to have the quotations. You got to know the proper file type when uploading it or so it can be visible. OK, so what I want to move at this particular time is try to put the battlefield crest. OK. Um, as you know, Battlefield has a, uh, a lot of school buildings have a, a different crest. I want to try to support a crest uh, inside uh, this area of the um, uh, of, of your test drive. And so where I'm, where I'm going to be asking you to put it is right below this area right in here, right below the end tag. I want to do another picture. So I have the banner and then we have the, the crest of uh, Battlefield resting right below your name and the uh, test drive. So I'm going to quickly copy uh, just an internal tag and I'm going to paste. I have copied the the uh, title tag right in this area. So it's an internal title tag. And I'm simply going just to, to, uh, to do something simple here and, and write just image, or you can write like uh, what the image is, like a crest. Okay. Okay. In terms of the school crest. So I've made an internal image, image crest. Image tells me, okay, this is a this is where an image is displaying on the screen. So I'm now going to copy that internal comment, comment tag. Excuse me. I scrolled down to the bottom. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it again, maybe a couple lines down. Oops, let me do it undo. A uh, couple lines down. And as and I'm going to add the word end to it. Okay. So you can see what I've now done here is, is added two internal comment tags that helps me as a user to define different segments within the web page. Okay, so I'm going to try to put the code right in this area. Okay, so I'm going to come back up, up to this. I'm going to be jumping around and I'm simply going to copy the structure. I'm giving you the, the structure already. You can highlight over the, the image tag or you can copy it from above if you wanted to. And I'm just going to paste it in there. Okay. And notice how it doesn't have width. And I'm going to be talking about the width in, in the future in one of these steps down below. But you can see that we don't have really a file called uh, image name. I just, I just made up, I just made up image name dot uh, uh, ping as a reference of just let's just call it something, but it's got to be inside the quotation marks. Now I want to seek out the uh, what's supposed to be inside the quotation marks, and you can see here to capture the image. Let's uh, use the picture of Battleful Crest, and so I've given you a link here. So I'm going to open new. Uh, so make sure it opens. Open link in new tab. Okay, and so this new tab open. Boom. There is a crest of the Battlefield High School. So how do I obtain the URL address so I can put inside that quotation instead of having a file local in our own folder? It'll still work. So if I come up here and click, I have now obtained and I've clicked in there the whole line. I've clicked once up here in the URL address and I'm going to copy that. All right, now it's copied to my clipboard. I'm going to come back over to the, the area, make sure I'm just inside um, the quotation marks, and I'm going to paste, right? Now, this is kind of crazy. I'm going to maximize my screen. I'm going to maximize my screen because it looked like it chunked down to a couple lines when I close this out. You could see, ladies and gentlemen, this area right here is the whole URL address to find that uh, um, link on the internet. And so when this page loads up, if your computer has internet access, like a Wi-Fi, it should automatically bleed in that image to your web page that is offline. So you can build, ladies and gentlemen, a web page and bring in images that are on the inter internet, even though your web page is not on the internet, you can bring in images on, on the web page to your page if your computer, which mine is, I'm hooked up to the school here, is online. 
All right, so you can see I, I, I have no spaces. This is looking clean here. The, I'm using a URL address, HTTP cool, uh, HTTP slash Siebel. And this is obviously loaded on my, on my own server in a location under assignment, uh, under assignments, okay? So I'm going to uh, put myself in half screen. You can see that, Chris. I'm gonna leave that tab open for the time being. But most certainly, if I come back here, here's another method. If you wanted to download this to your like local files, you could, like anything, you can um, save image as. Um, you can then find documents, find your folder programming, find the web development, find pictures. I can download this right into this area, which I'm going to do. Okay, so now I actually have the, the school crest in my own. So if you didn't want this to be online, then you could most certainly try to do the pictures slash and whatever the file name is that you have there. But I'm taking a, a different approach with you guys. And simply trying to um, simply try to uh, get a get an internet uh, access, get a, get an image that that is on the internet. So I'm going to go to file. I haven't saved this yet. I'm going to go save. I'm going to go over to my browser. I'm going to refresh my browser, and boom. I'm going to maximize my screen. Now, boom. Now this doesn't look centered, does it? It may look better if this icon or if this um, 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 uh, crest was centered. I think we got, I think we'll do that in the future steps. But you could see the crest is loaded right after the example problem 19 and it's above this horizontal line. This is what we got. We, we now have an image that is bleeding in from the internet, all right? So if I bring this back down, you, we've done successfully done this step right here by adding the crest to the, um, adding the crest to the web page. Okay, now that we got the crest on our page and you can uh, see the crest, um, I'm gonna move to, to present a online website that allows uh, people to upload uh, images with no cost. It's like, <clears throat> and I've been using it for years, mguru.com, okay? And what I wanna do at this particular time is focus on your, um, your banner, and I want to, the same method we took down here with this image, I want us to, to work with the banner to upload that to the internet, to get our banner online so we can then copy and paste our banner to the internet. And so it also is coming in online versus being local, as you can see here, okay? So even though it's, we created a picture folder and we have it, we're going to go uh, try to upload it to the internet. So go ahead and right click. Uh, this this link here in Gur, that and that's what I'm going to use, and I think I very well may have this already open up, but I'm going to maximize my screen at this particular time. I'm not going to spend time trying to lo look look at this inner, uh, this page. Some of you guys have been here before, maybe some of you guys never. You can explore it all, uh, at your own. But I'm and there's there's probably tons of these websites on the marketplace, but I've been using this in the classroom for years. So if I click on this new post right here, this new post right here, all right, it obviously changes and gives me a entry point where I can upload I can upload image. Now if you if you do a split screen, you can drag and drop here. But I see this choose photo or video, right? So I'm going to just come over to the second box and choose photo and video. And it's giving me a directory of where I'm going. So I'm going to scroll up and go to my documents folder or and find the program programming folder, which I see right here. I'm going to go into web development. I'm going to go into pictures. Now, I very well may have more pictures in, than you guys have, but what the goal here is looking for that image of the banner that we created last last video, all right? So I found it. It says banner.png, and I'm now uploading that and clicking upload. And so obviously it may take a couple seconds to up. Okay, there's a little bit of an advertisement screen that appears before you can see your up uh, your uh, file, but if you click on this link right here up on the left hand side, once you get you see your images and it says copy link in it and you click on it once, it should then copy that link to the computer's clipboard. Okay. I mean, you can, you can do other types of, you can delete the image and you, so you have control of what you put up there. Okay. But this is super easy to get it in an image to the internet. So now that I have uh, copy the link. I'm going to go back to my split screen and I'm going to go back to the area of the title. 
Okay, right after that title, we have an, that image tag that we put in during creating this banner. And I'm just simply going to make adjustments here. What's inside that quotation, and I'm gonna maximize the screen here real quick. My, what's inside that quotation, I'm going to backspace out, I'm keeping the quotations, and I'm gonna do a control V, and I've now pasted that link. And as you can see there, right there, that it's much smaller than the, that Crest link I presented to you. But you can see the link much smaller. That is a link of should be of your banner that you have created so if i go back to this k but one thing is missing here ladies and gentlemen is the extension and um i'm going to go ahead and let you know that i'm going to actually add a period.png to to this copied link that i'm i'm sending you again if i went to another approach i, I like to basically copy copy that image address and then put it in there and paste. Notice how sometimes it doesn't support what type of platform. So this is key here that if you don't support the .png with this link that you're copying, um, it may come up broken, okay? Broken being that you see a box and everything is pushed down below. So the key factor here that you still have to have and know, if, if I go to the seal, notice that the, the seal, uh, the, the core seal has the, dot jpg and so those are going to be some features that that if you're dealing with images and you don't support the the extension on here it may show up broken okay so those are keys so i'm going to come back to split screen and and um tell you that um if i go file save here and i'm now saving this 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 document saving this document and i come over to my test drive and i refresh my test drive and i'm going to maximize my test drive okay i am now seeing that image on my test drive which is local to my computer it's not on the internet but this banner there is getting brought in from this other website ingram that we have uploaded the file so if i come back to the notes ladies and gentlemen we have now successful uh, to have two images on our um test drive one is the crest that's coming in from another website in the ingram that you built um coming in from the ingram um from a different web host so i am now going to move on with step number two Okay, I'm now moving on to, to step two and in, in dealing with a clickable uh, image, more in the lines of making an in, uh, image, uh, uh, a, a, a click that'll open up another web page. Um, so we, uh, in example problem 18, we did deal with dealing with links and a lot of a lot of app attributes that went on with creating a link. As you can see down below here, I have a hyperlink around an image tag and a closing um, closing anchor. And so that's the, basically the approach that you get on with that. So I do not want you to copy that whole line. I do not want you to copy the whole line. Basically what I'm copying is just this first yellow box and I'll probably type in the closing tag. Okay. So let's go ahead and copy that, that, and that's the Prince William County tag. And, and we're going to be dealing with this, um, this seal. Okay, come down here to the image crest. Well, I know we were bouncing around with the image tag above. Now I'm coming back to the image crest, which we uh, created early on. And I'm going in front of this image and I'm going to paste what I just copied. And so what I just pasted is that um, yellow box or yellow line off the notes dealing with the click away image and it's the Prince William County website. You can see inside here, inside the quotes, I'm providing you guys with that Prince William County website. Now on the back end, you can do a copy and paste of the closing tag, but I'm simply going to um, type in the closing tag because it's easy enough, but it doesn't matter. I know the link will stop here, right? So I'm, what I'm hoping for is this image tag will be a clickable link. So let's see what happens, okay? Again, I have an opening, um, opening link that's wrapped around the the image with the closing a tag all right so i'm going to save uh put myself back in split screen ladies and gentlemen and if i go into the test drive and i quickly refresh this page and, and maximize this page you can see when i hover my mouth over top of the image it turns to a hand all right that hand anytime you see a hand on a screen like that it's going to indicate that that image is a clickable link. If this arrow would have stayed an arrow, then it would have just been an image. 
image. Like, like I come up to the image tag of my banner and I hover my mouse over my banner. I don't see a mouse, but this, my, my finger, excuse me, my finger, my mouse changes to a, a pointing finger. So if I right click on this and say open new tag, you can see how it then for the most part is opening up the Prince William County Prince William County page. So that, that does work. And so uh, ladies and gentlemen, that basically is how I think it's pretty simple how you create a image, a clickable link. So I'm going to go back to the notes. I'm going to proceed on now uh, as you guys should have done that. I'm on step two, creating borders. Okay. And borders is a, a line around some of these browsers, ladies and gentlemen, have default. It gives you like, okay, uh, I don't think Chrome has a de the default. Though. Okay. I'll show you this. The Chrome default is zero. Okay, it's, it does not support any line, but some of these browsers like Internet Explorer or uh, Firefox, they actually may give you a default as being one. So you will see a line around it. So let's, I'm just going to, I have the number three here. It could be any number. I'm just doing three, make it small. And I'm going to copy and paste. Now I'm going to go my into my um, uh, notepad and you can see the image tag. This is where I'm dealing. I'm dealing with an image uh, att attribute, dealing with the image tag here. Okay. And right after the image, I can do in the beginning, I could do at the end. Okay. I'm going to put this border at the end. It doesn't matter. It could be at the in between the image SRC or at the end. Okay. So I'm simply going to put it at the end. I'm putting a space after the quotation mark in that URL, yellow URL address. And I'm then simply hitting control V. It's not in the same place that you may see on the web site uh, notes, but I'm just putting some, something different. Notice how it's border equals quotation three. So I'm going to save this again. I'm going to save save this web page. I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to split screen. I'm going to go to the uh, browser. I'm going to maximize this. I'm going to refresh. I now see a line around my image. All I've done is created a border equals three. So good practice that web developers do if they're making a clickable image is that uh, they're, they, a lot of times they put in border, but they make it to zero because they don't want any browsers to have a default of line. Cause you know, it's just one of those things that most people do not put borders around an image. So if I come back, if I come back to my notepad real quick, ladies and gentlemen, and I take that, I take that border from the number three, and it could be a high number 10, 11, 12. You can look at that. You can explore yourself, but I'm simply going to change it to a zero. I'm putting a zero in the borders. And so that's where I have it. Uh, everything's still clean. I have a greater than sign there. Uh, again, if you delete the greater than sign, you're going to have errors. Okay. So you got to keep these greater than signs. That image looks clean. All I've done was added a border and changed the, the number to zero. All right. So I'm going file save. I'm going to go back to the browser. I'm going to refresh. You now see this, this, um, this um, crest still is flop doing the same way. I've added an attribute that says border equals zero to make sure there's no lines on this, um, on this, this image. And so uh, as I stop here, and I'm now going to move on to the next step. Okay, I, I'm going to move along. Uh, I'm going to try to go through four, five, and six somewhat quicker than I had one, two, and three, because <clears throat> there's not much uh, there. Uh, so um, jumping into number four right now, changing the size of an image. Now, when it when it is brought into a web page and, and the way we have done it, um, we don't have any control of changing the height or width or making it bigger or making it smaller. It comes in on the dimension of the actual size, okay? If I actually go over to the banner and look at the banner, our, our distance from this side to this side is 800. If I let's go back to the code and look at that real quick, our distance width from the table is 800, okay? And that 800, ladies and gentlemen, is from here to here. And we, when we made that image, we made it 800. So these numbers kind of sync up, okay? So um, to come back to the, the notes here real quick, um, in dealing with the height, you can do the height in a solid number, or you can do the height in uh, a percentage. Like I want it to be a 100% from point A to point B. I'm gonna drop the percentage right now and just do a whole number, okay? So I'm not worried about the width right now, folks. I'm just talking about the height. I don't want you to copy both of them. I'm just copying the height. And denote that there's a number sign because it calls for a number. So I'm just going to right click, ladies and gentlemen, and, and go back to split screen. And I, and I come down to the image of the crest. 
I'm still physically just simply going to work with the caress from this point, working with one image, manipulating that one image right at the top. All right. So if I uh, come to the right of borders, what we just did, I can do the height between the A and the HRV hyper reference. I can go in between the border and the end. I'm just, I'm, I'm just applying stuff to the variant. It could be anywhere. If these attributes don't have to be synced up. So you can see as I paste in here, I pasted height equals number number. Now I have number number means it needs to be a number. Okay, so I'm going to only going to go a two digit number right now. So I'm going to do something like, let's say, um, make it elementary, let's say 50. Okay, I'm doing a number that is just 50. Let's see what that gives us. So if I go file save, ladies and gentlemen, and I pull up the browser, I'm going to maximize this browser. I'm going to go to notepad and I'm focusing on this uh, crest right here. And I refresh, look how small the crest became because it is now giving us a 50 of the height. Now that same dimension will be equal for the width, right? Because the image is keeping its shape. All right, so if I go back to the notepad and let's say I make that a uh, bigger, let's say that I'm gonna a three digit number, I'm gonna go 200, okay? I now typed in height, I've changed the 50 to the 200 and I go file save on the notepad and I come over to the browser and I refresh. You now you see that, that, that image becomes very similar, maybe the same size. I'm not too sure what the properties of that. Let's make it even a little bigger. And folks, I, let's maybe I make a number like 600. Okay, it's probably gonna be whacked out really large. All right, and I go file save, ladies and gentlemen, and I refresh. Okay, notice how that crest becomes really big and the distance are equal uh, in this scenario. So what if we come back to the notes, I wanted to give a different width than what's the currently default is, uh, then the, and, and try to add a width to it. Okay, so if I go width, for example, I'm going to change these numbers again. I'm copying width right here, so I don't have to, I don't have to type it. And I come back to the um, notepad, and I'm right here, still on this, um, still right here on this image, folks. I'm adding a space after the zero, and I'm putting in width. Now I'm going to bring this for the practicality. I'm going to bring this back down to 200. Ladies and gentlemen, just for the practicality, I'm bringing it back. And look, what, what if I did the width much larger? What if I did the width 400, okay? So look at my two numbers I've typed in. I typed in, I brought height back down to 200. I typed width. So width is going to be longer. So if I just look at this real quick, save, and I go to the browser and I refresh that browser, you can now see a distorted image because I'm stretching that image out to uh, 400 and the height is 200. So... Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm not saying, hey, this is good that people do not. I'm just showing you attributes, how the height and width can be used to, to change the size of an image. Because these images sometimes are really small and people use heights to make a bigger on a particular page. So to rectify, I'm, I'm just going to drop, I'm going to drop uh, the width. I'm just going to keep height equal 200. Uh, back to its normal uh, size that I think was comfortable and I'm refreshing. And you can see that takes a more a um, logistical size of it, okay? So I'm then, ladies and gentlemen, going to skip over doing alternate. Um, some of these browsers work with some of these attributes. Some of them don't. And Chrome, which I'm currently working, does not support alternate. But I think Internet Explorer and Firefox, so it does the same thing. A drop-down menu will appear. And if you type something in, in, in here, that in between the types of in here in this test, that says like, Battlefield High School Crest, all right? A drop-down menu very well may be supported, okay, with images, okay? Maybe it was like a, a picture of people and you can uh, have a drop-down on those people's names. So when you hover over that, uh, the mouse over that image, a, a bubble of a text box will appear and those names will show up, okay? So I'm just going to move on and move down uh, to trying to center this going to try to center this crest. And we, we've seen center already uh, elsewhere with dealing with text, the, uh, um, taking the same approach. We also have something that says alternate right. You can use alternate center or left as a different method. So here is a, is a process. You can use the center tag to center something, or if you use a line, okay, uh, alignment, okay, and that's abbreviate uh, for what's going on here. Align right, center, uh, or left. Uh, so if, if you type left, it'll, I mean, that's really default.
why would you type a line left if the default, if you look at my browser right now, I'm defaulted, oh, my image is defaulted to the, to the left. So in some sort of capacity, people, you can use left, but why use it if it's default? But I'm going to start real quick to see what happens. I'm going to, I'm going to add and delete. If see what happens if I say a line right real quick. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go to the back side of 200, right? So we, we added in borders. I put a space, we added in <clears throat> height 200. I'm going to the back side, putting a space, and I'm, I'm doing a line right. So if I go file save here for a second, and I go to that browser again, and I refresh, you can see how, wow, now I get text wrap going on as well. You can text wrap information around um, by using this alignment, okay? So this, this text is forming up. That's one reason people use alignment so they can put images on the right side of the page, all right? If I, so whether you want to keep it aligned to the right or um, which I currently have here, I go back to um, uh, full screen, which I currently have here, or if you want to put in the center tags, that center tag should be before the A and at the very end, because that's wrapping that whole string of that image. And so putting that, that, uh, um, that crest center, I went with right in this example. So if I go back to the notes, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that I have the crest on the right hand side right here. But if I was center, it would most likely nest right between the um, the example problem 19 in this line. So if I just, okay, so I'll, I'll go ahead and do that with you real quick. Um, so if I go back to the, the code and I, I would have to take out, I would have, you would have to take out alignment because you're trying to align it. You have, I'm showing you uh, multiple ways you can align something center or right, okay? Again, I talked about nothing on the, um, you would not have to do anything for the left because that's the default. So if I'm physically going to type the word center here, um, and I'm, I'm going to then uh, copy and paste that at the very end and put a backslash. So what I did is I extracted the alignment to the right. I typed the word center and put center on the tail end. And I'm going to file save. And I go to the browser and then refresh. You see how the crest is kind of centered <clears throat> uh, right after the the example problem area okay so either way i don't care with <clears throat> just giving you expo exposure if you wanted to line it to right you have to be inside the tag following following these different methods okay uh these different methods right here in terms of centering or aligning it to the right okay i'm going to come to the last section of this <clears throat> adding um color and images um, which is changing the background color. Uh, and I, I have a couple, th couple different attributes I'm gonna go over. One, uh, as we jump right into is we, someone already got exposure to it, um, is the attribute called BG. BG stands for background followed by color. Go BG color. Now, if I go over to my test drive right now, okay, and scroll all the way up, this is the tag at the very top that I'm gonna be facilitating with. It's it's the body tag. So uh, right now, I think when we started this back in, uh, for example, problem number uh, 17, it might have been some sort of aqua color. And you might have ex been exposed to changing it to red or green or yellow. Okay, so I'm not going to go in there, and do that. You can do that yourself. Um, but what I am going to do is try to switch it to an image. Right now, if I go to my, uh, if I go to my test drive, our background color is purple okay and like i told you it mess messes good with our image here i mean it would be hard to say that um people can identify wow that that's an image and that's a background color if i move my mouse uh, back and forth over here in the left hand side okay so uh what i'm going to be addressing now if I go back to the notes i'm, I'm kind of skipping a for right now and you can explore different colors if i go ladies and gentlemen if i jump right now to my uh for example to my uh, to the um objective. In the objective set, um, area, I have something that says apply text color to HTML documents. Okay, you see a color table. And this, these colors can apply to a font color as well we, we got into. So if I open new, and this is just a scraping of the surface, you can see all these colors. Like if I was going to use this color, this is a six digit code that would also present the same color. If I was going to be, um, use another color like khaki, okay, this six digit code also represents that color. So <clears throat> I may have some links over here that help out with um, 
a defining a six digit code. Uh, some of these links may not effectively work anymore. I don't know. I haven't used them in a while. Um, and I, uh, I just try to uh, click a couple of them, see if they're working. Okay, so you could see like a six, six digit color here. And you, there's, there's tons on the marketplace right now where you can, you can identify the actual color of um, these different um, items. But um, for the long story short, this is just a, a scraping of some of the colors you very well may be able to use. Uh, so I'm just going to go back to the notes. Okay, so I'm not going to explore the beachy color much at all because I've already spent time with it putting the word purple inside the beachy color. All right, so what I'm going to move on with is the background color. Okay, and, and, and the background color talks about an image using an image, okay, with, with this approach, right? Um, and so before I do a copy and paste, let me continue on. It says below are two different images that I would like you to copy and paste into the URL address into your test drive background, okay? And you can see I've given you the, the entire code, but let me just talk about the first one real quick. And if I click right here and open a new tab and see what this first one look, looks like, look at this image, look how it has purple on the right hand side and in blank. I actually just created this. So if I go to the paint program and I zoom out of my paint program real quick, I'm, I'm in like 100%. If I zoom out for a second, look at this image I have created, simple. And how an image map works, it layers itself over top of it. So you would have a square over top of the square, over top of the square, a long type, a long square. So to get logistics of that, it's an image that falls an image. It just keeps repeating itself all the way down the page, okay? So if I go to the notes, back to the notes, and I'm gonna go ahead and I, I don't really need to copy this. Uh, it's a two steps po co copy. I know how to type in. What I'm going to copy is this long URL address, which is that one I just created to show you. And you can copy it as well. So if I go to my notepad, and I come into the body section and I'm going to delete everything that says BG color purple. I have a space after, I'm right here, I have a space after body. So if I type in the word background, I'm physically typing in background, I put an equal sign, I put a quote, and then I do control V to type in what I copied off the web page. Notice that this URL address, this is, this is an image that's going to be coming into my web page as the background. So if I go file save real quick, ladies and gentlemen, and I look at my browser real quick, my test drive, and I go refresh, okay? Now you can see some, hey, my purple does not match up all the way. But now you can see like one side, is, it is like all purple, and the other side is all white. Okay, uh, do I have the capability of moving this area all the way to the top? It's, it's part of the alignment. Yes, I can most certainly, I could, I could take out that sliver of the space. Not going there yet, but this is part of the design to see what the background looks like, okay? Notice how our, our white background is white, so it's blocking off half of it, half of it. So if I go back to my image, I hopefully you can see that this image is being brought into the background and it keeps repeating itself all the way down the page. So if, let's go back to the notes and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna close out this. I'm gonna go back to the notes and explore another image. I'm gonna up, 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 open this image right here that I kind of have pulled down and look at this background image. It's a, it's a square box, okay? And it has like a little uh, swervy, smoky uh, light, light lines going through. So if, I'm, I, if I highlight that image, and notice how I was using PNG for the first one. This time, this extension is uh, J, J, JPV for GIF file. If I copy that whole um, area and I take that into the notepad and I replace it, I take out the one I pasted before, I switch it with that purple wave, I'm gonna go file, save, I go to my browser and I then I refresh it excuse me, I don't need that open, and I refresh my browser, I now have switched my browser so it has more of a wavy, wavy aspects to it, okay? So uh, understand there's there's a lot to uh, these images that you can you can support your own image. Versus a color, you can support an image. And if I go back to the notepad again, you should be able to identify, ladies and gentlemen, that um, the background is that 
attribute and it's given me. Now, could you do a your own? Could you build your own image and do it in the same way where we had picture slash in the file name? Absolutely. Okay, you could do that. Okay, no different than what the purpose of you guys putting a folder on your um, inside inside your document and in, in development. You can actually put the file inside picture and use a local local file to to create that but understand i'm using something that's online to help you out support to the support these um aspects so at this particular time as we got through these notes ladies and gentlemen i'm saying we are now done you sh your 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 test drive basically should have your banner it should have an image we've gone through uh your notepad should have some attributes in it i have the border i have the height Okay, some attributes, I have it centered. If you wanna keep it line right, that's perfectly fine. So for the most part, you're gonna be uploading this file, ladies and gentlemen, to the Canvas Dropbox in this area right here. Uh, you should be uploading this, this file to the, to the Dropbox, example problem 19 in the Dropbox on Canvas.